In today's video, we're going to check out the Norsk 15 amp hour lithium iron hmm, lithium ion battery. I've been saying lithium iron phosphate for so long. This is not a lithium iron phosphate battery, guys. A lot of people will get these batteries confused because they say lithium. Uh, this is different chemistry, different attributes. One of the things you'll notice right away is this thing has a couple USBs. Most batteries don't have that, um, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. Uh, I don't know how much I would personally use it. Also has a battery status indicator. Um, I'm going to get this guy charging because you have to use a special charger with it. It takes quite a while. This is a 2 amp charger. One thing I did notice, I went looking on their website, and these USBs are only warranted for 30 days after purchase, which I thought that was odd. The functionality of these USBs, they're only going to guarantee them for 30 days. So keep that in mind. Uh, the battery has a two-year warranty. Uh, not a whole lot of information on their website. Kind of disappointed about that. I was really looking for specs. Uh, I don't know if they're just trying to be secretive or what, but I couldn't find any BMS information at all um, on this battery, which I assume it has to have one because these cells are more dangerous. So you really gotta want those protections. So I'm gonna hold off on the short circuit test that I usually do with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, before, well, before I put this on charger, let's talk about weight. So one of their huge selling points with this battery is the weight. Let's get on the weight scale here. And this Norse battery weighs in at two pounds, 6.8 ounces. Now let's compare that to the Amped Outdoors 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Two pounds, 12.6 ounces. So we're talking about weight savings in the matter of ounces. Uh, I don't know. Probably a difference of a, yeah, it's like a difference of a screwdriver. Screwdriver is actually a little bit heavier than different. So uh, to me, the trade-off of a few ounces between the charge cycles is, yeah, you're, you're gonna have to replace this battery, you know, probably three, three times before you have to replace that one. So, um, the weight savings of a screwdriver isn't worth it, in my opinion. So, let's get this guy on the charger, and we'll talk a little bit more. So, let's talk about cost real quick. This Norse battery cost $109.99. Uh, that comes out to $7.33 per amp hour, which is on the lower end of the batteries I've reviewed so far. Uh, you do have to buy the special charger for it. Uh, that's 25 bucks, so you're looking at 135 bucks for this and the charger. So let's look at the information on the box, which has about the same amount of information that's on their website. Operating voltage is 8.4 volts to 12.6 volts. Um, I assume the BMS will kick that off at 8.4 volts. We will test that. Capacity 15, max discharge current 10 amps, uh, max charge 12.6 at a rate of 7.5 amps. So this says designed for all popular sonar units, mechanical flashers, digital sonar, sonar units with large displays, which I'm kind of surprised they put that on there, and underwater cameras. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because their dropout voltage is so low, 8.4. Um, where the dropout voltage or the operating voltage on units like, like, it looks like a Helix 7 that gentleman's fishing with, um, your operating voltage on that Helix 7 is going to be between 10.8 volts and 20 volts. So I would be curious to see if you actually can run all 15 amp hours before that that helix cuts out so what, what we're gonna do 
is we're, we're going to do two capacity tests. We're going to do a capacity test where we draw it all the way down until the low voltage protection circuit kicks in. We're going to charge it back up and then we're going to do a um, capacity test to simulate this Helix 7 and we will kick that test off at 10.8 volts the lower limit of the operating range for that fish finder all right guys this charger finally turned green uh it took quite a while this thing is now fully charged we're gonna hook it up i may disconnect it from the charger now see how it's green it means it's fully charged yeah disconnect it then we're gonna hook up our capacity tester so there's a 15 amp hour battery we're going to discharge at a rate of 0.2 c that means we're going to discharge at 3 amps uh, the max discharge current on this is 10 amps so it's well within the limits of uh, what this battery is rated for so right now we're sitting at 12.6 volts and keep in mind lithium ion that is fully charged Let's see here. Now we are discharging at three amps. So here in about, should be about five hours. This thing will be uh, all done. And then we'll, we will charge it up again and we'll do our Helix 7 simulated uh, discharge test. Stick around. Okay guys, we are done with our capacity test. We are sitting at 16.019 amp hours. This is a 15 amp hour battery, so that test uh, passed. So I'm gonna get this guy charged back up. The test that um, will be really important now is this Helix test. We're gonna simulate the Helix on this capacity tester. We're going to set the cutoff voltage at 10.79, somewhere in there, just below 10.8. reason being, the operating voltage for your Helix um, 7 is between 10.8 volts and 20 volts. So we want to see how long this battery will run that Helix 7 unit. We're going to set the draw at 0.8 amps. That's the draw of the Helix. Um, that's how much a helix draws so that's that's what we're gonna do so stick around this will probably get pretty interesting all right guys i think we're about ready see our charger here is green indicating we are charged i'm gonna disconnect that show you my settings here so we're gonna discharge at 0.8 amps our cutoff voltage is 10.7 so we are all ready with that. I got the GoPro set up for the time lapse. We're gonna hook that up. See there, we have 12.69, so we're fully charged. I will check back in when this uh, gets done. It'll be probably a pretty long test, and then we will uh, talk about the results. Stick around. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze frame this right here. And you see that little paw on the right? So if you're curious as to why uh, the tester was moving around a little bit, uh, Milo, our shop cat, was, was on patrol and I think he just probably uh, dragged his foot over power wire um, and just moved that thing around a little bit. So if you're curious, that's the reason. All right guys, let's look at these res results here so as you can see i stopped this test at 10.799 volts if you look down there at the bottom we'll see the capacity of 10.45 so we'll just round up we'll call it 10 and a half 10 and a half amp hours before we got to the bottom limit of the operating voltage for the helix 7. um so what's this mean that means this battery uh, you're only getting a third of the, two thirds of this battery. Um, up there top right, you can see 
8656 that is the the time we started with a 9959 so if you do the math there this test ran for 13 hours and three minutes if you head on over to the Norse website and look up their they have a runtime chart so we'll just scroll down here and look at this guys they are claiming this battery will run 18 hours so pretty uh, eye-opening stuff there, if you ask me. I also came across um, Hummingbird was actually selling this battery in their Helix, in one of their Helix setups. So Helix 7, um, you can see the battery right there on their website. You scroll down here, it says uh, premium shuttle with a 15 amp hour battery, lithium battery. It just seems pretty damn misleading to me uh, very disappointing results let's let's move on to my concluding thoughts about this battery so I've decided to not void the warranty on this battery not because I'm taking it back or anything like that but be because this video has um, has me asking more questions about this battery uh, so I'm not ready to destroy it just yet I'm probably gonna make a couple more videos on this and some other lithium ion batteries but to wrap up this video let's talk about what I do and did, did and did not like on this battery um usbs are cool i i like the usbs um i'm not opposed to that idea at all uh, i did test them off camera they worked fine with my phone uh i like the battery charge indicator you know i think this is uh, a really good thing for a guy with a Gens box. I could really see where a guy would get some value out, out of that feature, those features. Um, it's a little bit lighter, so that is a plus. I mean, it's not much lighter than like the 12 amp hour amped, um, but you know, five or six ounces just might mean a lot more to other people than me. Um, uh that's pretty much two other th i mean green's my favorite color i guess so it's green uh i guess those are the three things that i like about this battery um let's talk about what i don't like and i've got i actually made a list like a quick list here um so 30 day guarantee on the usbs what's that say about your product if you're only guaranteeing it for 30 days so that right there is it's got some red flags going off for me at least 30 days for a usb um so that's it, it if you haven't figured it out by now uh integrity's quality is pretty pretty important to me so that's uh yeah, that's yeah another thing i don't like is the voltage range which that's how lithium ion batteries are um so lithium ion the name lithium ion that's kind of a blanket statement it's two things it's blanket statement for all lithium batteries so everyone will people even call lithium iron phosphate which i absolutely hate um they'll call it lithium ion and the terms get confusing but for me what i do is i call this type of battery lithium ion um the batteries with 11.1 .1 nominal voltage and how we get that is there's three three series cells in here um, each cell is 3.7 volts put those three cells in series and you get 11.1 uh, .1 for your nominal voltage now the cathode in these are likely uh, NMC nickel manganese cobalt oxide um, the same thing that's in the 14.8 volt, but we call those batteries NMC batteries, even though it's chemistry is likely going to be the same with these. It just has one more cell in series, so you add uh, 3.7 volts to the already 11.1. .1, that, that's how you get your 14.8 um, nominal for the NMC batteries. Um, Lithium iron phosphate, yeah, that it just has a better range of as far as wiring for those cells in series at 3.2 volts each it's right closer into that 12 volt range that sealed lead acid batteries uh, are in in my opinion 
modern day electronics unless you're running a Vex, Vexor flasher which I, that thing can run off a 9 volt battery um, unless you're running a, a low power consumption unit like that most of our modern day electronics need more power the voltage range of this battery is just not ideal for um, even a Helix 7 which only consumes 0.8 volts but the voltage range is 10.8 to uh, was it 20 volts so that in my opinion there's better options and i'm pretty disappointed in hummingbird for even selling this uh with that with that setup so pretty disappointed in that decision they made when you have runtime of 13 hours when they're advertising an 18 hour runtime for that for that unit it'd be it'd be interesting to see if hopefully they change that I hope they change that. I hope other companies take a peek at their run times and don't just go off of the math. I know what they're doing. They're taking the draw of, of the fish finder, dividing that by the amp hours of the battery, but no one's considering the voltage range of that battery. So you have, you know, four and a half, five amp hours of capacity that is not usable in this battery because the voltage range is too low for those fish finders. I assume they're getting a really good deal on these batteries. And speaking of really good deal on batteries, that's why we see companies push these batteries. Uh, the cells are about 30% cheaper, and you only have to buy you have to buy less less cells because it's 11.1 um, volt nominal. So you're only putting three in series, so it's cheaper. You need less cells, and then you got companies that sell them for the same price as a uh, like a lithium iron phosphate or a price similar to it. So they're making tons of money and. Honestly, I think they're just taking advantage of customers' ignorance. I'm not calling you guys ignorant. I'm just saying your lack of knowledge in the uh, batteries. Um, they slept lithium on it. It is lithium. And then the customer thinks they're getting a great deal, and, and, they're, and they're really not. So I do not think there's 10, 15 years ago, this would have been great technology for the fishing community. Nowadays, there's better options, and I don't. I disagree with companies that push this technology because there's just better options and when i did this test on the helix guys i did that under ideal conditions it is 71 degrees down here in my shop um it never gets below 68 degrees this these battery cells in here guys this is very similar to our, our drill batteries we all know what it takes to keep, you know, what happens when you don't keep your drill batteries warm. So what happens when, when I do this test when it's 20 degrees, which I'm gonna go on to do in a, another video. As far as, as far as using these cells in, in, in cold conditions, they're just not gonna hold up as well as lithium iron phosphate battery. So yeah, this video really has me going down uh, a capacity rabbit hole, if you will. I have other batteries with this same technology i will be testing so markham might is one of them also have a 12 amp hour force from markham now this is a shields exclusive and so this battery is only sold at shields but i think it's going to perform a lot like norsk so i will be doing that video soon um I've already read some reviews on, on Shields website where guys are buying this thinking they're getting a deal and then realize what it is. So um, just keep in mind if you pick up one of these 12 amp hour force from Shields, it's going to be the same technology as this Norsk. And I will be making separate videos for both these both these batteries uh, this winter. But yeah, I'm, I hope you guys get some out of this oh this video series just kind of is a good foundation for your uh battery knowledge so if you guys have any questions if you have any disagreements on how i'm doing this please let me know in the description or in the in the comments um if you guys have any suggestions i'm all ears uh yeah and if you have a battery you think i should i should uh take a look at make sure to tell me in the comments so hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button leave me a comment and uh check out this next video thanks guys